In today's video, we're going to take a look at the new Pick a Brick cardboard boxes that are going to replace the good old plastic cups we've been using for so long now. And since I am a professional packaging designer, I figured it would be a fitting topic to discuss on the channel, break down the design, quality of production, and of course compare them to the previous solution. So get ready for some packing and stacking, and let's get started right now. It's no secret that the pick brick walls are one of the best ways to get bulk qualities in a fair price and many of LEGO fans, including myself, are often restocking their collection using this method because you are not paying per piece, but rather a fixed price for a cup. Unfortunately, this is not a widely accessible solution for everyone since it is exclusive for the LEGO retail stores and not everyone has a direct access to those. Now the plastic cups were never a perfect solution because in order to get the most value of one, you had to stack bricks together and because of the rounded shape of the cup, it was always a very time consuming process so most of the everyday clients just fill the cups as they go, often leaving open space inside. To be clear, there is nothing wrong with that since you still got a better value of bricks than for example breaking down sets or buying parts on Bricklink or the online version of the Pick a Brick store, but still, in order to be most efficient, you had to put in some work. And the new cardboard boxes seem to be aiming at exactly that, among other aspects of course that we will talk about later in the video, but since the boxes are rectangular, it should in theory be easier to stack parts in. But what I'm afraid of, as a person that deals with cardboard packaging on a daily basis, is the reusability of the boxes. The plastic cups are a great way to store your large quantities of parts, as you can see on the display right here, because I'm doing exactly that. If I have a lot of one part type that doesn't fit in the drawers I use, I just put them in the cup and place on display, and because the cups have these Lego-like studs on their lids and holes in the bottom, you can really make not only a decent storage system, but also an eye-catching display. But putting the cups aside for now, it's time to address the elephant in the room, which are their cardboard replacements. You already could have seen some reviews of the boxes because LEGO has been sending them to many creators in the last few weeks and even ran some trials in a couple of chosen LEGO stores but since they were also sent to my luck for reviews and I've been designing cardboard packaging solutions for nearly 10 years now I had to get my hands on them. So, the boxes come in 3 different sizes large and small as replacement for the plastic cups and one even smaller to be used instead of the three-figure blisters in the build a minifigure section. They are all made of the same material being a craft cardboard, I'm guessing around 300 grams per square meter, which is equivalent to a bit below a half millimeter thickness. And since we can see the small FSC Mix logo printed on the boxes, we can be sure that it's either made from a recycled material or at least produced from controlled wood. This type of cardboard is one of the sturdiest on the market, so overall it's a very high quality material and the boxes are professionally cut and glued and even flattened to a very space saving form, which for sure is convenient for transporting and storing at the LEGO stores. Also the print quality as well as the graphic design are very well made, resembling 2x2 and 2x4 bricks, which is always a fun way to let everyone know what is the purpose of these boxes, while being colorful like most of the LEGO products are supposed to be. But let's talk about the construction. These types of boxes, which are called tuck top auto bottom boxes, are for sure the best solution that LEGO could make, since they can be transported flat, taking up very little space, while being super easy to assemble at the same time. You just need to spread it like this and you have a box ready to be filled in a matter of seconds. Ok, so now that you know a bit about the technicalities of these boxes, let's now check out their capacity and compare that to the good old cups. So to get it out of the way, let's first take care of the build a minifigure boxes, because there is no hard science to it. It's supposed to fit in 3 minifigures with their accessories 
and that is exactly what they do, measuring at 92 by 92 by 37 millimeters. Out of pure curiosity, I tried fitting the most figs in the box and I managed to put 22 stormtroopers inside, so it holds way more than it's supposed to. So to be honest, I would probably go with a slightly smaller solution, maybe more or less resembling the old blisters, but they probably had some sort of logic behind that, so let's leave it at that. The most important thing here is the ecological aspect, because the old blisters were of course made out of plastic, but didn't actually have a purpose after we bought our figures from the store, and they were usually thrown away and polluted the environment, so here it is a win-win situation. So let's now change our focus to the regular pick brick packaging, because here is where the mat begins. So the large box has a size of 184 by 92 by 55 millimeters, or measuring with bricks, it's 23 by 11 studs with a height of 5 bricks and 2 plates, which gives us around 930 milliliters capacity. The small ones on the other hand are measuring 92 by 92 by 55 millimeters or 11 by 11 studs and the same height which equals to around 465 milliliters. The plastic cups had the capacity of 950 and 475 milliliters respectively, which may give the implication that the cardboard boxes are actually a worse deal, but are they really? Let's check it out using a couple of most popular brick types and let's see for ourselves. I'm not going to stack every piece I test out because Ain't nobody got time for that. So I tried focusing on the loosely placed bricks and later we will use some basic math to calculate how much of the pieces can we theoretically put inside. Let's start with 1x2 masonry bricks. A full cup seems to fit a bit more than the box, but we can still put all the ones from the cup in its cardboard replacement if we try hard enough. Next let's try some 1x2 tiles. Here the small box closes with no problem, so we have the same amount of parts inside. As for the large cup, unfortunately I didn't have enough blue ones to use, so I had to mix in some other colors, so I hope you appreciate the effort of me sorting them back afterwards. But still, we can fit the same amount in the box as we did in the cup, so let's move on to another piece, which will be the semi-elastic leaf pieces. Since again I didn't have enough of the pieces in my collection, let's see the small leaves in the small box and the big ones in the big boxes. And again we have the same amount in both. These parts are elastic enough that we can cram them inside both solutions so someone could probably put a couple more inside if the cover would be held by a sticker or tape. Another piece I wanted to test out are Nexo shields and nothing extraordinary here as well. The same amount in the cups and the boxes. And lastly we have the ones that we can see the biggest difference from the ones selected being the 1x2x3 slopes. And here the favor is towards the cups since the boxes are really stuffed beyond their natural size. Now I really don't want to get too much into the plates aspect because there is no doubt that unstacked pieces are way less efficient than if we spend some time stacking them together and I really don't want to be doing this just to compare these two solutions so let's just see how much can the cardboard boxes fit. And for that let's bring up the studio app and see how much studs makes up for the box. And by studs I mean one by one square plates stacked on top of each other. Of course no one would be crazy enough to stack 1x1 one one plates, but for reference it should be good enough. So we can fit 4301 studs in the big box and 2057 in the small one. 
So it turns out that the small one is a bit less than a half of the large, 187 studs to be exact. But anyway, given these numbers, we can calculate how much of the most basic plates we can stack inside these boxes. Now as everyone knows, the bigger the plate, the less parts we can fit in, but here for sure it will be more efficient to use the box because it was always such a struggle to put big plates like 6x6 or 8x8 in the cups because of their shape. So here, without physically checking that, we'll give the win to the cardboard solution and let's end the capacity contest here. Now before we get to the summary, I have my remarks regarding durability after playing around with filling up these boxes. First of all, the flap on the cover is due to fold or even break when opening the box several times. Now it's nothing unusual with these type of cardboard boxes because they have a locking mechanism on the cover which is supposed to keep the lid closed until we want to force open it and due to that the material needs to be bent a little in order to unlock it. Bigger issue I've noticed is that the glue on the bottom came off during my test so it may occur sometimes that the box will be unusable after some time. So here, LEGO needs to change the glue that they're using for the boxes because the worst thing I can imagine is that you're going home with a couple of boxes in a bag and the glue comes off and all of the pieces start flying around the bag and you may even lose some of the pieces you paid for. Okay, but hoping that won't occur, after all of that jibber jabber about the new boxes, I guess it's time to sum up everything we talk about, starting of course with the positives. Both solutions are basically the same size, sometimes in terms of capacity giving favor to the cups, sometimes to the boxes. So depending what elements are you buying, you can have a slight difference, but overall you shouldn't notice that big of a difference that all of the sudden it's not profitable to buy at the pick a brick anymore. The shape is for sure a plus since you'll find stacking to the rectangular shape much easier with most of the part types. The graphic design is nice enough, easily recognizable as a LEGO product. Less space is needed for transportation and storing which from a financial point of view is a huge win for LEGO. Assembly of the boxes is quick and easy. And of course the boxes are way more nature friendly which for sure is the most important aspect here. And what I didn't like about them is for sure the reusability of the boxes, which can't be used as part of a solid storage system unless you use them as some kind of dividers in your drawers. The durability, since the cardboard is bound to break much faster than the solid plastic cups, and as you saw in the video, my personal grudge about the quality of the glue used in the production which wasn't strong enough to get through my test, so it probably will cause some issues in further use. So now that you know what I think about the change, I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section below your thoughts and let's carry on with the discussion over there. In the end, we are all stuck with this change regardless if we like or hate the new boxes, since it seems like LEGO already made that decision, so we'll just have to live with it. As for when are these changes coming, from what I've heard, LEGO is about to start introducing the pick brick boxes in the fourth quarter of this year, and the build a minifinger ones in 2024. So if you want to get some more cups for your LEGO room, you still have a couple more months to do so. Now I hope you enjoyed this analysis I made for you and you got some value from this video. And if you did, smack that like button and consider subscribing to the channel because besides the occasional breakdowns like this one, I make a lot of greatly detailed mocks in various themes, so if you love LEGO like I do, you will definitely find some entertaining content here. And with that subject out of the way, in the next video we're getting back to building my Indiana Jones mock, so stay tuned for that, and until then, as always, make sure you keep it brickin'.